Welcome to the online tutorial for the MATLAB Finite Element Program for solving 2D elastic problems in biomechanics, a program developed by Dr. Michael Miga at Vanderbilt University. In this session, we will walk through the solution to the HIP problem given in class. If you wish to run MATLAB and follow along with me, make sure the current directory includes the image of the HIP we're examining, along with all of the M files or P files comprising the Finite Element Program suite. Let's begin. Start by importing the image as a 2D array in the main workspace using imread. Since we're told to assume the hip replacement is homogeneous, we're only concerned with one material boundary, and that is the material boundary that defines the shape of the hip replacement. Since we don't have to worry about intersecting boundaries, we can run make mesh using a single uh, input, which is the image array itself. Now we'll define the boundary. Now we'll define the material numbers left and right of the boundary. These definitions should assume the counterclockwise direction as was traced. Refine twice. And now input the material properties given to you. We will multiply by a conversion factor and input the pixel size. Now save the appropriate mesh files. Next, Enter the boundary conditions. We will fix the femoral head so that it is not displaced in the normal or tangential direction. And then we'll apply a compressive stress normal to the diaphysis base. The compressive stress will have an amount of half of a megapascal. First we'll fix the head. And then we'll fix the diaphysis, or rather apply a stress, compressive stress, on the diaphysis. and no tangential stress. Enter 1 for done and now enter the boundary condition file. Now we generate the constituent, constitutive property variables using the run 2D elasticity model command. I will pull that command from my history.
notice all of my output variables are named in the given order and all of my input arguments bear the names of the mesh files that I've just now created. We'll now call this function and generate our variables. Now we're ready to do the analysis that we're asked to perform. Part 1 asks us to generate a flow field of displacements over the border of the mesh. And we will do this by using the PDE mesh and PDE plot commands using P, E, T, and V as inputs. Now you see the border of the hip replacement overlaid with a flow field of displacements. Save this file as instructed. Be sure to save it as a JPEG file. You can choose the file type by using the scroll down menu. We've now completed part one. Part two asks us to generate three separate color map figures showing the stress in the y direction, the strain in the y direction, and shear stress. This can be accomplished simply by using the following command and interchanging the XY data variable as needed. I'll show you what I mean. First create a new figure, dock the figure, What you see here is the stress in the y direction. Now we'll create a new figure. We'll dock our new figure and create a similar plot, only this time we'll use stress in the y direction. Finally, a third figure will show us the shear stress. Notice all I'm doing is interchanging the variable specifying the XY data to be color mapped. What you see here is the shear stress. So again, the figures here are shear, or shear stress here stress in the x direction and stress in the y direction. And for uniformity we will designate the axis as equal and there you can clearly see the three figures shown. And that completes part two. Part three requires us to find the triangular element where the xy displacement is at a maximum. To find the point of maximum displacement, we'll use the find command to return the index of the vector v where the root square sum of the columns is a maximum. We'll do this in three steps. The first step is to generate a vector of displacement magnitudes. To do that, we'll use Pythagorean theorem 
to generate the magnitudes of the displacements based on the displacement array V, which we've generated through our program. Here's how it'll work. We'll create a new variable called magdisp to represent the magnitudes of all our displacements. This equation comes directly from the Pythagorean theorem. Be sure to use the dot exponent to apply your arithmetic to each element element-wise. Notice a new variable appears in our workspace. MagDisp is of the same length as our original array of displacements, V, but it only has one column instead of two. This verifies that we are only calculating the magnitudes and not the component XY displacements. Step two is to find where the magnitude is a maximum. To do this, we will use the find command. We will use the find command to search through the variable magdisp to find where the maximum of magdisp occurs. When we do this, MATLAB will return the numeric value representing the index of the location of the element where this maximum occurs. And here we see it's the 1098th position. We will use that number to index the location of that maximum displacement. But first, we will generate the boundary of our, of our hip replacement. So let's create a new figure. Put, we'll dock the figure and put a boundary of our hip replacement so that we can get a reference point. And now we will find the element of maximum displacement. As you can see, the value of maximum displacement occurs near the neck of our hip replacement. We can zoom in to the triangular element and assign it a more visible pattern, such as a marker. And now we can clearly see where the maximum displacement occurs in our figure. This concludes the hip replacement solution session.